Well, when Tony first came home and we started learning how to use the board, I mean, one of the first things he said to me was, would I help him to die? And we talked about it and we went through all the trying to put him, you know, trying to change his mind and that. And he said that he would give life a go for a couple of years to see if he could adjust because some people said that, you know, some people do adjust. Um, so he gave it a couple of years. And it was about December 2007 that he decided that he wanted to start, you know, making plans and investigating how we could go about you know, doing what we're doing. And he took himself off all of his life prolonging drugs. So the only things he's on now are um, things to keep him comfortable. Um, and he made a directive saying that if he was, um, you know, not, not to resuscitate him and if he should have another stroke, then he wasn't to be treated, just to let him go. So it's really been since 2007 that we've seriously been pursuing this, isn't it? Mm. Well, we hope to get our trial, get our case heard, and for, you know, for the, it, it to be made legal for a doctor to be able to give him a lethal dose of something when he decides the time is right. So my life now is nothing like life before the stroke. Then, my family and I were living just outside Dubai. We had lived overseas since 1994 and were investigating South Africa as a place to retire to. I was the chairman of the local sports club and the vice president of the body governing rugby in the Middle East. I had a nice home, an excellent job as a senior manager in a construction company which required regular travel and I earned enough for all of us to have a comfortable life not wanting for anything. Now, my wife and I live on benefits and I am totally dependent on others for everything. I go out once a year to the dentist and don't see people who call to see us. This is because I can't speak and I get more upset just sitting there, unable to contribute to the conversation, than I do not seeing anybody, it is the lesser of two evils. I spend about six hours a day on the computer and over ten hours watching TV. The rest of the time I am sleeping. Just after the stroke I felt angry that life should do this to me and I felt cheated when I thought of all those people, in particular celebrities, who took drugs like heroin and, even though they wrecked their lives, got away with it and lived normally. Nowadays I am just resigned to a miserable existence. Um, well I've gone from being his wife really to being his carer. Um, you know, I have to do everything for him, which he finds incredibly hard, um, obviously. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a completely different role, and it sort of all happened overnight. You know, there was no warning signs, and, you know, one day he was fine, the next day he wasn't. So, yeah, so it's not like having a, you know, progressive illness. I mean, it just all happened. Um, yeah, it's been very, very difficult.